Hello, St. Luke's. I would just like to take some time on this uh, Scouting Sunday to say thank you from Cub Scout Pack 73. It's been a very interesting year for us, but we are still getting things done. We uh, have visited Upper Frederick Fire Company this year. We're still meeting uh, at very distant locations for our den meetings, and we're even learning um, all of our civics and certainly respect for the flag. We're still serving in January. We donated over 300 folded flags and mailed them to troops overseas. In August, we donated numerous pounds of pop tabs to the Ronald McDonald House, and they use that to recycle the aluminum uh, to offset uh, costs for medical expenses. And then in November, we collected and sorted uh, 1,200 pounds of food for Boyertown Multi-Service. Because of COVID, we had our first virtual summer camp this year, so we pre-filled um, bags for parents and scouts to swing by and pick up and scouts were able to do crafts, hike, meet elective requirements, and still have some fun. We are still getting out there, so we do hike and learn about conservation once a month. And we just wanted to say on the Scouting Sunday, thank you, St. Luke's, for supporting us and being our chartered organization. Uh, certainly, if you do know any K or fifth, K through fifth grader, remember to send them our way. Good morning once again, everyone. I'm Pastor Christian McMullen, the interim pastor here at St. Luke's. Uh, before we continue, I just want to give another thank you to uh, the Boy Scouts who uh, just submitted that, that video of the stuff that they've been doing at St. Luke's. And I want to thank them and their involvement in St. Luke's ministry. Uh, we thank you for your involvement and participation uh, with the ministry at St. Luke's. So thank you, Scouts. And we look forward to when we can do things with y'all in person. I uh, have some other announcements. The first is uh, the church needs a new boiler. Uh, that came to a head this week. And um, I want to thank the property folks who've kind of cleaned up the mess and provided space heaters for the office wing of the building. Uh, thank you, everyone uh, who's working on that and keep your ears and eyes peeled on what will be happening next with getting a new boiler. So thank you everyone there. Uh, the transition team, uh, we've got a team of folks who've agreed to serve on that task force and they will be getting assembled and uh, keep your eyes and your ears peeled for news from the transition task force. Uh, we will be worshiping in person this Sunday, uh, February 7th. Uh, so, Come on out if you're comfortable. Uh, again, social distancing and precautions will be in place. Um, keep an eye out for what that'll mean from Dennis. Uh, from what I understand, it'll be the same types of procedures that y'all were doing back in the fall. Uh, but again, if you're not comfortable coming out, uh, we'll continue to provide worship online. Uh, and also in regards to that, my last announcement is in regards to worship today uh, on this video and when we um, will be, do, we'll be doing virtual communion. So I'll explain a little bit more once we get to that part of the worship service. But if you're watching online, uh, I, can, I encourage you to go get either a cracker or bread or something, wine or grape juice, uh, and you can set those elements aside. Um, just know that, that God's word joined with the earthly element is what makes the sacrament in Lutheran theology. And so the worship service is hearing God's word uh, and the body and blood of Christ and the bread and wine are given for you. That's what makes the sacrament the sacrament when we receive that in faith. So um, I'll explain that a little bit again uh, right before we celebrate communion. So that's all I have for our announcements. Uh, let us continue worship with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward. 
failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Sisters and brothers in Christ, beloved children of God, grace, mercy, and peace be with you all. Also with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us turn our attention to the reading of God's word. Our first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 21 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows upon them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes and see who created these. He, he who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faith and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like wings like angels. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Here ends our reading. Our psalm today is Psalm 147. Hallelujah! How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor God with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem and gathers the exiles of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord counts the numbers of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to God's wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly and casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music upon the harp to our God, who covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth, making grass to grow up on the mountains. God provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they cry. God is not impressed by the might of the horse and has no pleasure in the speed of a runner, but he finds pleasure in those who fear the Lord and in those who await God's steadfast love. Hallelujah. Here ends our psalm. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 16 to 23. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me. 
and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. Here ends our reading. Our gospel reading this morning is from Mark chapter 1. As soon as Jesus and the disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Christ. <clears throat> so when I was in seminary... We had to be student chaplains in an institutional setting, and it was called clinical pastoral education. Um, everyone kind of dreaded it back then. 90% um, of the CPE sites were in hospitals. I did mine at Duke University Medical Center, uh, which was ginormous, and was a student chaplain at the ripe old age of 23, assigned to a neurosurgical floor, which was interesting because when I was in eighth and ninth grade and kind of growing up, I thought it'd be kind of cool to be a brain surgeon. So here I am assigned to this neurosurgical floor at Duke. Well, CPE functioned on the action, reflection, action model of learning. You learn stuff on the job, and then you reflect on it in a small group, with a supervisor, and then you go back out and you do it all over again. Now, there are a lot of truisms in this learning model. Uh, we learn best by doing, right? You know, you could read about stuff in a textbook. For instance, I could read about how to write a sermon. But that's completely different from preaching one. And I'm looking at Dennis behind the camera, and I'm sure he's familiar with that the last few months. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, I can read about how to fix a hose on my minivan and even watch a YouTube video. But when it actually comes to using pliers to release a spring clamp, that's a different story. Uh, if I want to preach a second or a third time a sermon, I need to reflect on how the first one went. I need to be able to replay it in my mind on how I did it how it worked out or not, 
Um, that kind of thing, right, Dennis? Yep. Um, and and the, it's a, again, it's a truism. You can do something till the cows come home, but until we reflect on it, on what we're doing, we can't improve, change, adapt, much less teach someone else how to do it. Without reflection, we can't answer the question of whether or not we should continue to do something in the first place. But without action, nothing happens. There's nothing to reflect on. We might think something might not work, but we won't know until we act on it, until we test our assumptions. Um, I've been in a lot of churches where people brainstorm obstacles. Oh, we can't do that. That'll never work, and this is why. We can't because, and you think about all these reasons why you can't. Well, no. Try it, and then see if it works. Action, reflection, action. You can't have one without the other. You can't grow, adapt, change, whatever, without doing both. Something like that is going on in the gospel reading. You start off in the Gospel of Mark, and Jesus is super busy. He's running around doing lots of stuff. Boom, 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 one after another. He's healing Peter's mother-in-law, casting out demons, curing diseases. So many people that they're crowded around outside his door. There's the action. And then he gets away from it all. Goes off by himself to think, to pray, to look back at what he's done in Capernaum in that half a chapter in Mark, and at the same time look ahead to what the ministry will then happen next, what it'll look like next. So that's the reflection piece. And when the disciples finally find them, you know, when he comes back, then he tells the disciples what he's going to do next in terms of almost a personal missions, mission statement. I came out to proclaim the message to the neighboring towns because that is what I came out to do. Back to action. His mission, stated real early in Mark's gospel, his mission is to bring into reality the kingdom of God. And then he gets away. He starts to enact it, reflects on it. What will it mean for him? Leads him to make this self-defining statement that, if you notice, includes us. Includes the disciples. Let us go to the neighboring towns. Let us go somewhere outside of our comfort zones and proclaim the message there because that is what Jesus came out to do. Action, reflection, action. Action. Gets baptized in the Jordan, filled with the Holy Spirit. Reflection. Gets driven off into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit to be tested, to fight those doubts, to wrestle with the devil about what his identity means. That'll be the first Sunday in Lent, by the way. And then action starts proclaiming the message. The time is fulfilled. The time is now. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. And then he starts doing that. Starts doing ministry with the disciples present. But just doing it with them present doesn't expand his ministry or his message or helps them grow. So he goes off, prays, comes back, action. We can't have lasting change. We can't have adaptation. We can't have growth without either one of those things taking place, the action and the reflection. Now I hope that y'all have been able to kind of hear between the lines, and I hope that y'all notice that all of that applies to us as well. Let us go to our neighbors and proclaim the message there to them. For that is what Jesus came out to do. That is what Jesus is about. The transition process 
is going to be kind of like that. Anytime there's major change, it should prompt some sort of reflection, should, should help us start to think and get a little introspective and wonder and rethink things. And you know what I mean? Now, this reflection is especially necessary when we're having to adapt to new challenges. Now, in y'all's case, it's adapt to the loss of a pastor, while at the same time, adapting to how to do ministry in a pandemic. And then even the even bigger picture, how to do ministry in the 21st century. As our society and culture changes, as the communities in which we live change. And we can try stuff, and they won't always work, which is why we need to reflect on them, reflect on what we're doing and why we're doing it, evaluate it. But to approach that intentionally and prayerfully, the way Jesus does. The transition process will be about that. It'll also mean giving each other grace and space in order to do that. Knowing that things won't always work or be received the way we'd like. As change keeps happening and as uncertainty builds, we as humans get more and more anxious. We want clear answers. Just tell us what to do. Or we look to leaders to just tell us what to do or to fix things or whatever it might be. Again, I think the last year especially, um, again, as the uncertainty builds in our lives and suddenly you see things differently. There's an epiphany, by the way. We're in the season of epiphany. Well, okay. You know, how do we handle that? How do we adapt? As a community of faith and as people, as individuals, we need discernment first. And that's why the community is so important. The Holy Spirit leads us, right? The Holy Spirit leads us, but all of the Holy Spirit's gifts are spread throughout all of the community. All the Spirit's gifts aren't in one or two people or the council. The Holy Spirit's gifts are spread out within the entire community, and we need all of those gifts in the community in order to discern, uh, to use Paul's phrase, what's good and what's true and what's right. I've started to hear stories about what your ministry has looked like the last several years. And there's a lot going on. There's a lot, a lot of great stuff. How do y'all build on that? Where do you go with it next? What does that mean to call a new pastor? What does that mean for the next three to five years? Given where you are here in Obelisk, and people are like, where the heck's Obelisk? So then I have to say, well, okay, Ziglerville. And then they say, where's Ziglerville? And then I say, you know, Frederick Living. And they're like, oh, yeah, okay, I know where Frederick Living is. It's kind of funny, but still, right? This is y'all's place that God has put you. And we have a mission and, and, and God has a vision for us in that place where we find ourselves. Jesus' ministry in Mark looks like that. As you move through the Gospel of Mark, not everyone understands his teachings. His miracles cause conflict with the religious authorities. Not everyone decides to follow when he calls them. The disciples get sent out. And Jesus gives them ex explanations and instructions on what to do in success and what to do in failure. Jesus can't get much done in Nazareth, his hometown. And then, of course, there's a betrayal, arrest, crucifixion, and resurrection. And the church has been reflecting on that ever since. Reflection and being moved by his vision of who God is for us. There's the action. There's the Spirit moving us for what the kingdom of God looks like for us in our time, here, now. Jesus shows God to be for us as a healer, a liberator, a reconciler, a light, 
the power and the presence of God. And his vision, his vision of the kingdom of God is to bring that same healing, liberation, reconciliation, light, and God's presence to others. Action. Reflection. Action. Amen. At this time, I want to give thanks to all of you out there in Internet land, uh, tuning in to our worship here at St. Luke's. I also want to thank all of you who've supported the ministry uh, when we haven't been able to gather in person. Uh, your continued support makes a tremendous difference. Let us pray our offering prayer. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us like a mother receives her child with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Let us confess together our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray that the radiance of Christ will illumine the church, the nations, and all who seek the light. O God of the weary and faint, grant strength to your people that your church would radiate the healing wholeness that you offer to all. We ask and pray, O oh God, that we might have that wholeness for us and for our neighbors. We pray especially for all of those who've been affected this past year by the pandemic. We pray for healing and wholeness for them. Gracious God, be with us. Strengthen us in our prayer and in, and in the study of your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all, you bring rulers and those in authority to justice in your light. Show your wise and all-loving face to the leaders of the nations that they may govern fairly and rule wisely. We pray for our elected leaders and all serving in public service. Grant them a heart for service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of healing, you sent your son Jesus to cure diseases and cast out demons and to restore people. We ask and pray, O God, that you would restore all of those who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit. We give you thanks, O God, for the COVID vaccine. And we also pray for all of those researchers who are looking for cures for cancer and other diseases. We pray for those on our prayer list and those we name before you now, whether silently or aloud. Jim, Doris, Linda. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of the weak and the strong, we pray that you would bless us. Bless the ministry of this congregation. Bless the Transition Task Force. Bless the Council. Help us, O God, to, to act and to reflect, to listen for your word, to give thanks for your spirit. In all these things, O God, we give you thanks. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. O God of life and death, knowing that the faithful departed are in your hands, we commend ourselves to those same hands of steadfast faithfulness and love. In all things, O Lord, let us cling to the power of your resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our spoken and silent prayers, O God of light, and reveal yourself to us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. At this time, let us prepare for uh, Holy Communion. Uh, like I said at the beginning during the announcements, if you have bread or a cracker or something like that, or wine or grape juice or whatever you might have, I encourage you to you know, pull those elements out now. Uh, I just want to remind us again that um, even though this is a virtual community, it's still community, and we hear God's Word come to us in this virtual, communal kind of way, and just know that Christ is truly present when that Word is joined with the bread and the wine uh, that we are taking together, even though it is virtual, uh, and know that Christ's body and blood is fully present with us in those elements, uh, and we receive him through faith. Let us continue. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give our thanks and praise. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray together our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Wherever you are in your journey of faith, you're invited uh, to participate in the sacrament of the Lord's table. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And now hear the blessing. God the Creator strengthen you. Jesus the Beloved fill you. And the Holy Spirit the Comforter keep you in peace. Amen.
seems each time I tell it more wonderfully sweet. I love to tell the story for some have never heard the message of salvation from God's own holy Be the light of Christ. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God.